Hello viewers and welcome back to the channel. You are looking at the brand new Cervelo ZFS-5 from a company with amazing pedigree for rapid aero race bikes comes this, a short travel lightweight XC race mountain bike. And in today's video, I am gonna review it. We'll talk about the climbing performance, descending capabilities, the equipment highlights, and share my likes and dislikes after riding and living with the bike for the last two months. Now, a lot is at stake here for Cervelo, and they're really putting their reputation on the line by adding a mountain bike to their range. So the bike needs to be good. And by the end of the video, we'll hopefully know the answer to that question. So let's start by looking around the frame before we hit the trails later in the video. So weight was a big objective for the company and the full carbon frame and swing arm and alloy linkage give a frame weight of about 1400 grams without the shock fitted. And with a shock, it's about 1700 grams, which is definitely right up there with the lightest bikes in the category. And that's a good start for a race bike. We have 100 mil of travel front and rear from RockShox suspension, both controlled by a twist lock to lock out and open that suspension. There are some nice details on the bike that really stand out. For a start, it's SRAM UDH compatible, so it takes their newest group set. We have a nice chain retention device for the one by setup. We have a threaded bottom bracket, space in the main frame for two water bottles, clearance for 2.4 inch wide tires. You can fit a dropper seat post, it will take one. But on the downside, we have internal routing for both the rear brake hose and the cable for the rear shock lockout. So perhaps a small uh, thumb down for that, but that's the way many bikes are going. But let me know your thoughts by leaving a comment down below. Now let's talk about price and it's not a cheap bike at all. The bike in front of you is the top of the range model and has a top of the range price as well. We do have SRAM XXSL access gearing, so super lightweight, nice lightweight carbon fiber reserve wheels, a carbon fiber seat post, handlebar and stem. And the weight on the scales for this bike is just over 10.5 kilos for a size large, which is very impressive indeed. A very lightweight bike, uh, but so it should be for the money. This bike here, and I hope you're sitting down for this, is 10 and a half thousand pounds, about the same in dollars. So an eye-watering price for sure. There is, thankfully, a model in the range that starts from just over 5,000 pounds with the same frame and swing arm, but different and more affordable components as well. That is, to be honest with you, the bike I'd rather test and review for you today. But this is the demo bike the company have sent out to all the magazines and journalists and the one I've been fortunate to spend the last two months on. Now let's talk geometry, which is a really interesting topic for mountain bikes these days. This bike is fairly middle of the road, shall we say. It's modern, definitely very modern, but not the most progressive compared to some other bikes. But I think the numbers really hit a sweet spot of a nice balance that gives a bike that's capable going up, down, across, fits me well at 181 centimeters tall, Yes, there are bikes that will embarrass the Cervelo in terms of progressive geometry. But I think for lots of people, buying a bike like this for fast riding and definitely racing, the numbers work really well. Okay, let's start with some climbing first because, well, get the horrible stuff out of the way. And because a bike like this needs to perform well on the climbs, that's where races are won and lost on the climbs. So let's do some climbing first. This bike is lightweight, the frame is stiff. It should be right at home on some of the longer climbs I've got ahead of me today. Oh my goodness me, the way the bike climbs is just insane. It's so fast. Who needs an e-bike? We got a bike like this. 
it's a very flattering bike on a climb. I gotta say, it makes the most of what fitness you have. Onto a more technical climb now, full of jaggy rocks and it's loose and tricky. This way you need lots of traction and nice compliant suspension. They're both giving you that traction and also smoothing out the rise. They're not so jarring and you can make good progress and get to the top as quick as possible and beat everybody else you're racing against, whether you're mates or actual uh, competitors in a race. And it makes light work of a climb. It's so, so good on the climbs. The weight clearly helps. There's nothing holding you back at all. It feels like you're pedaling air. Really nothing between your legs at all. I love how the suspension is nice and active, but it's still giving a nice, kind of taut, firm pedaling platform. So it's not bobbing around and not wasting energy. But it's working over the bumps where that Canyon Lux World Cup, which is too firm when it should have been softer and more forgiving. This bike is definitely forgiving on the rough stuff. It really is working with you to get you from A to B, heel to descent, corner to corner, as quick as possible. Right, this bit is quite tricky, loose, slippery. Oh, loads of traction, loads of traction. And I fit on a bike good. I like the reach and a size large for my 181 centimeter height. This Cervelo is definitely one of the, the fastest climbing XC race mountain bikes I've ridden in a long time, possibly ever. Right up there, the Canyon Lux World Cup, but this Cervelo definitely has the edge. Mostly because the suspension is so much more active and compliant on small bumps. Just helps smooth out a rough trail let you refocus, get a power down, not being bounced around so much. It's still ultra efficient. It's not bobbing around unnecessarily. It's really good when you're pedaling, putting the power down. There's loads of traction on tricky stuff like this. Got a nice position on the bike, good seat angle, getting the power out. Good balance as well, composure through like rocky, tricky sections. So climbing performance is fantastic. It really is very, very good indeed. Just everything you want from a fast, rapid climbing XC race bike. So marks out 10, well, it's a solid nine out of 10. Very impressed indeed. But now time to go downhill and see how the bike descends because we are seeing World Cup XC race courses become more and more technical and regular riders pushing these bikes ever harder and faster on a rougher terrain and demanding more from their bikes. So let's see if the bike also excels on the way back down. Because we're seeing how technical and demanding XC World Cup courses are these days and how good riders like Matthew Van der Poel and Tom Peacock, oh, they are insanely capable riders. And they demand bikes that can keep up. Way. And you need geometry suspension that delivers. A bike like that. Oh, that's fun. <laughs> Way, love these berms. Way. Way, happy roller coaster, so much fun. This is why I love mountain biking. Come do that on a road bike. Way, way. It's impossible not to make noises and sounds on these sort of trails. So much fun. Way, hey, <laughs> It's so good. So much fun. I'm not going very fast, but it feels very fast. And that's all that matters to me, really. 
I love riding mountain bikes, especially short travel, lightweight bikes. They're so fast, cover ground so quickly. And just what you need, just what you need at this time of year. A nice break from the road bike. Right, descending done, and the bike does impress, but not as much as it did going up. I mean, it's very quick, and the suspension does work well, especially if you lower the rear shock pressure to make it a bit more supple and use that inbuilt progression to uh, give you support through mid-stroke and for bigger impacts. The geometry is generally pretty good, nice reach, uh, slack enough, maybe not as slack as it could be, but I think it's okay really for the type of riding it's designed for. The lack of a dropper seat post is a big handicap for me at least, so a dropper seat post would be an upgrade I would make which is saying something on a 10 and a half gram bike. So yeah, drop a seat post is a bit of a big fail, really. So out of 10, it's a seven out of 10. It's definitely better than that Canyon. So it's good, not great, uh, but yeah, pretty decent to be honest, as we said. So I'm nearly finished for today's ride. So some likes and dislikes from today's ride and also the last two months of riding this bike. Let's start with some likes. Well, there's a low weight for a start, one of the lightest bikes in a category, and that really shows on the climbs. This bike, oh my days, is so fast, so rapid on the way up. So you like climbing? This is definitely a bike to consider. I also really like the way the suspension works. The rear suspension is much more compliant and plush than that Canyon Luxe World Cup. Gives more traction, uh, more comfort, and it's a smoother ride as well. And I like the rock shock move to the twist lock for open and lock out on the Sid fork, which is fantastic on this bike and the rear shock as well. So you can leave it in open all the time and save the lockout for the road climbs or the sprints at the start of the race, but in open, it works really well. I also like the equipment on this bike, although the 10 and a half thousand pound price tag is pretty eye watering, it has to be said. I'm really impressed with the SRAM transmission SL XX Axis, or is it XX SL Axis? 12 speed, wireless shifting, it works really well pretty much all of the time. But there are some occasions when the shifting is a bit slower than you want because of the way it now works. The rear mech waits for the cassette to be in the optimum position to shift, and what it does is lightning quick and it makes no noise at all. Sometimes, occasionally, there are situations when the shift is a bit delayed. And while for general trail riding, that's okay, you can live with it. If you're racing, it could be a make or break thing. So it's not quite as rapid as the old Access was. Uh, lightweight wheels from Reserve, very fast rolling tires as well, but some dislikes as well. There's no getting away from the high price of this bike. I mean, it's dripping in amazing equipment and components, but over 10 grand for a race bike like this, you need to be sponsored to have a bike like this, I think. But the big dislike for me is a lack of a dropper seat post. Yes, the carbon posts save weight, but even for racing, and especially for trail riding, as I am today, as I generally do, I want a dropper seat post. There is a trail version of the bike with a dropper post which has more travel, and that might be a better pick for that sort of down country trail rider who still wants a rocket ship on the climbs. You get 120 front and rear, uh, bigger tires, and some other changes as well but a dropper seat post, even on a race bike, would be nice to see. But generally, a very impressive bike, so lots of likes, a few dislikes, amazing performance, eye-watering price. Uh, but I can definitely recommend this bike if you have the budget or you are sponsored and you are going racing. It's definitely a bike I would shortlist along with a few other contenders in this category. So very impressed with Cervelo's first full suspension mountain bike. I think it's a punt that has paid off. The most surprising launch last year for sure, but yeah, fair play to Cervelo. They've expanded their portfolio of bikes with a very credible um, offering. So yeah, I'm impressed. Anyway, let me know what you think of this bike by leaving a comment down below. And if you enjoyed watching the video, make sure you subscribe to the channel by hitting the button down below. And if you want to see a review of that Cervelo Lux World Cup, I referenced a few times and watch the video right up there. But I've got a few miles left and the sun is starting to set. So I'll see you all again very soon. Thank you so much for watching.